These few remaining acres of ancient forest near Cologne are the setting for a confrontation that tells a story of our times. And it's a story which is reshaping German politics as concern for the environment clashes with pressing energy needs. On the one side, there are the beech and oak trees of the 12,000-year-old Hambach Forest. And on the other, the expanding Hambach coal mine. Estimated to be roughly the size of Manhattan, it's a mine that's threatening to swallow the last remaining 10% of the woodland. As many as 100 climate change activists have set up camp in the forest and now live high in the trees. One of them, who refused to reveal his identity, told me they will stay here as long as it takes to save it. This your home? No. This up this. That's your home? Yes. Wow. Total length of time that you've been in here is what? Two years. Two years yeah. living in the forest. Around Why are you taking such a strong action against the mine? This forest is an ancient forest, and it is wrong to destroy all of it. They don't care. The, con the companies will not care. The owners of Hambach Mine, RWE, told us that they are respecting the opinion of a federal commission who would like to see the rest of the forest preserved. The owners said they're examining whether this would be possible and what the consequences would be. But RWE's assurances haven't satisfied these climate change protesters. What is important is that we stand up and that we put ourselves against it. Around 40% of Germany's electricity still comes from coal. But despite currently expanding mines in some areas, Germany plans to be coal-free by 2038 under the Coal Exit Commission's proposals. The government says it takes time to move to greener energy without hurting the economy and suffering job losses. But the patience of the activists at Hambach Forest is running out. Michael Zobel has been campaigning to save the forest for years. I want that they stop it, maybe better today than tomorrow. It's necessary, not only for the forest, forest but we're talking about climate change and catastrophes all over the world. I saw you with your grandson. I was wondering if you're here as a grandfather as well as as an activist. Yeah, so someday he will come and, and, and ask me, hey, grandfather, with the climate change and with the oceans rising and rising, what have you done? But there's another side to all of this. Manfred Laus works at Hambach Mine. He, too, is worried about his grandchildren. Same priorities, but different principles. Wie gesagt, ich habe mit 16 Jahren angefangen als Jungwerker mit Schaufel und Hacke. His family's future is threatened by the phasing out of coal, which will see jobs go in the years to come. Was ist mit den Jüngeren? Der jetzt, der Junge, der Taufe hat, der wurde jetzt übernommen. Der unterschreibt nächste Woche seinen Festvertrag. Ein Baby ist da, eins ist unterwegs. Zu. So, was ist mit den Jungen? This is a new front line in German politics. I'm standing on a fault line. On the one hand, the coal mine that wants to expand, and on the other hand, the forest that's been here for thousands of years, and in between, the people. And worries about the continued dependence on coal are driving new political loyalties. The Green Party doubled its vote share in the recent EU elections, putting them in second place. How do you explain the rise in popularity of the Greens? It's really quite significant, isn't it? Climate change uh, was uh, uh, always a big topic in Germany, but, but uh, in the last year, there was a very dry summer. People recognized climate change is not something that will happen in the future. It is happening now. And uh, they recognized uh, Germany is not a country that's doing much. Uh, it's quite opposite. Here, the wood is destroyed and uh, the coal mining goes on. Do you not think that Chancellor Merkel is doing enough? She is trying to phase out coal, she says. I don't believe in her. She always uh, makes a big show. She's very good in a show to say, uh, we will act, we will do something. But after that, nothing happens. But it's not only the Green Party who are on the march. In the former East Germany, coal mining has a long tradition, which is still celebrated at annual parades. Here, the shift away from coal has started to bite. 
Many mines have closed and people are nostalgic for the good old days of coal. Their livelihoods still depend on it. 300 current and former miners have turned out for this march to celebrate their proud coal heritage. It feels a bit like a festival, albeit a rainy and a rather elderly one. What's uniting everyone here is coal, but not its future, its past. The people here have dedicated all of their working lives to the mining industry. They don't share the future vision of the climate protesters, but they do share one thing, frustration with the way the government is handling the coal issue. Man kann nicht einfach nur sagen, wir schalten die Atomkraftwerke ab, wir nehmen die Kohle vom Netz und dann verlassen wir uns auf Wind und Sonne. Das funktioniert nicht. Für viele ist es ja immer noch ein ganz, ganz großer Arbeit, also ein wichtiger Arbeitgeber. Ich kann nur hoffen, dass der Regierung klar ist, wie viel Verantwortung sie hat für die Menschen hier in der Region. In this part of Germany, it's the far right party, the AfD, which is gaining ground. Their message resonates with voters who see ecological issues as an elitist concern. On the doorsteps here, it's often jobs, not the environment, which come first. Stefan Kubitsky is an AFD candidate hoping to win a seat in the Brandenburg Assembly in the approaching elections in September. And he's using the coal issue to win support. We are an industry nation. We need coal. Als sichere Stromquelle, weil nur durch Wind und äh, Wasser und Luft äh, äh, wird das nicht. Is it because they're frightened of their futures and you're playing into that? Viele Leute haben Angst, weil es wird ja es wird ja falsch gemacht. Es wird erst der Austritttermin bekannt gegeben, anstatt Arbeitsplätze zu schaffen. Und wenn die Kohle weg ist, dann stirbt ja alles. Weil was soll hier herkommen? Industrie kommt nicht her. So far, I've seen how the left and the right are increasing their vote share at the expense of the political center ground. Chancellor Angela Merkel made her mark as a young politician championing climate change initiatives. She led the way on the international stage at the Kyoto Protocol and more recently at the Paris Climate Accord too. Now though, her failure to find answers is damaging her at home. I've come to Berlin to meet Andreas Lammel, a member of the government with responsibility for the transition from coal. Can I ask you directly, has Chancellor Merkel's credentials as an eco-chancellor been trashed? She's not delivering, is she? I think Germany has in many efforts, which many countries in Europe or in the world have not gone yet. Ausstiegsplan für die Kohle ist ja das nächste Beispiel, dass Deutschland äh, hier für die Rettung des Weltklimas gute, äh, gute Vorleistungen abbringt. Isn't the center losing ground because of this issue? You're stuck, aren't you? You're stuck in a no-win situation electorally because it's impossible to deliver anything that pleases everyone. Ja, genau, das ist, haben Sie richtig beschrieben, genau, das ist die Herausforderung. Ja, ist klar, Oppositionsparteien haben es bei solchen schwierigen Prozessen immer einfacher als Regierungsparteien. In my travels across Germany, I've discovered profound differences, but also striking similarities. I found people abandoning the center ground of politics in search of different solutions for Germany's continuing energy challenges. Change always has its casualties. But as Germany transitions to greener energy, there are new political winners emerging, offering very different solutions in a changing world.